During the latter stages of World War II, the Germans initiated the Emergency Fighter Program, an attempt to create a cheap but effective aircraft that could halt the Allied bomber offensive that was devastating Germany. Many of the aircraft designs submitted were jet or pulse jet powered, for example the Heinkel HE-162 Salamander. At the same time, earlier, a more expensive aircraft, like the revolutionary Messerschmitt ME-262, continued in production, at entering frontline service. But not all research and development had been concentrated on jet aircraft. The Germans had already created but overlooked the fastest piston-engine fighter of the war, the Dornier DO-335, file or arrow. Now the Arrow would also be included in the emergency fighter program, an extraordinary aircraft that could have changed Germany's fortunes if introduced earlier in sufficient numbers. The Dornier 335 emerged from Dornier's pre-war flying boat designs, some of which incorporated push-pull configuration engines. This unusual design reduced aerodynamic drag, and because the engines were mounted along the aircraft's center line, it increased the roll rate. The plane was easy to handle and immensely powerful, delivering a maximum speed of 474 miles per hour, or 763 kilometers, at 21,300 feet, or 6,500 meters. In comparison, the twin-engine US P-38 Lightning fighter bomber could manage just over 400 miles per hour or 660 kilometers, and the P-51D Mustang, the single-seater escort fighter, 440 miles per hour or 708 kilometers. The British Hawker Tempest 5 was 435 miles per hour at maximum speed or 700 kilometers giving the Dornier 335 a distinct combat advantage over all Allied types it was likely to encounter over Germany. The V-1 prototype first flew on the 26th of October 1943, making a total of 27 flights. V-2 first flew on the 31st of December 1943, with upgraded engines, and V-3 on the 20th of January 1944, with a redesigned cockpit canopy. After 60 hours of test flights, it was clear that the Dornier 335 was both very fast and had very good handling. Orders for 120 aircraft were placed for completion no later than March 1946. It was planned that 2,000 Dornier 335s in all models would be built for the Luftwaffe. However, the activation of the emergency fighter program caused Hitler to order maximum priority to 335 production. However, bombing of the manufacturing plant caused a delay, and a new line was opened by Dornier at Oberpfaffenhofen. Sixteen prototype 335s were built and flown, and 22 pre-production aircraft completed and flown before the war ended, for a total of 38 airframes. A training squadron was formed, Air Probungskommando 335, consisting of plenty of experienced fighter and bomber pilots. German records indicate that the Dornier 335 was intended for action against the fast British de Havilland Mosquito, used as a pathfinding aircraft for the bomber streams. But delays meant that all the pilots managed were a few test flights and delivery flights. The squadron itself did not receive any aircraft until December 1944, when four 335s were finally on strength, and it suffered its first loss on the 24th of December, when Dornier 335 V4, an unarmed prototype, crashed at Bonnefeld near Koblenz during a transfer flight. It has been supposed that V4 fell victim to an enemy fighter, but records are a bit hazy on this. Testing of the 335 continued all the way into April 1945, and war's end. One pilot attempted to eject from a 335 near Prague after seeing his rear engine was on fire. The canopy failed to release properly, and the pilot attempted to land instead. At that point, the ejector seat fired, throwing the pilot out, causing severe injuries. 
It appears that on at least one occasion, a Dornier 335 came perilously close to air combat during testing over Germany. French ace Pierre Klostermann was leading a flight of four Hawker Tempest from No. 3 Squadron, Royal Air Force, over northern Germany in April 1945, when he claimed to have encountered what was later identified as a 335, flying at treetop height. As Klostermann manoeuvred to attack, the 335's pilot stepped on the gas, leading the Tempest far behind in his wake. With the war almost over, on the 26th of April 1945, one pilot attempted to fly to Switzerland. A faulty compass led him over the Vosges Mountains in Allied-occupied France. Running out of fuel, he tried to eject, but the system failed, and he had to bail out the traditional way. Also in mid-April, frantic efforts were made to save the 335s based at Rechelin from being overrun by Allied troops. One aircraft dodged Soviet and German flak and enemy fighters to get to Oberpfaffenhofen via Prague. However, the effort was wasted as this aircraft and over a dozen other 335s, including the two-seater trainer versions at Oberpfaffenhofen, were captured by advancing US forces. One two-seater 335 a-12 was sent to the British Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough for testing but it was lost in an accident when a rear-engine fire burned through the control cables and it crashed onto a school at Hove in Hampshire on the 18th of January 1946, killing the British pilot, Group Captain A.F. Hart. Another Dornier 335, a pre-production model, was one of two such aircraft shipped to the United States as part of a wider transfer of German aircraft for study and testing, codenamed Operation Lusty. One went to the USAAF at Freeman Field in Indiana, but its fate is not known. The other was tested by the US Navy at Patuxent River Naval Air Station in Maryland between 1945 and 1948. In 1961, the dilapidated aircraft was donated to the Smithsonian. Restored at the Dornier plant at Oberpfaffenhofen in 1975, using some of the original German engineers from the war, the aircraft is today on display at the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center, the National Air and Space Museum, the last Dornier DO 335 in existence. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.